Welcome back to Sewing Saturdays. Welcome back to Sewing Saturdays. We are covering, um, doing a recap of the circle skirt that we covered last week. If you didn't make it to class, today is going to be perfect. Um, we're going to be doing a circle skirt and then I'm going to be talking about special occasion um, dresses and garments and how we're going to put them together this month and um, all the tips and tricks that I have for that. So, um, uh, last week I covered two different ways to get a circle skirt. One was flat pattern drafting and the other is um, kind of like an on the fly, my cheat guide to cutting out a circle skirt. So I'm going to cover those again because they're super quick and really easy to do. And then I'm also going to um, talk about how to sew a skirt together, all of the extras that you need um, to get that done. I finished my neon skirt. If you guys have been following all the videos I've been posting about my neon yellow skirt that I made, which is a circle skirt. So I'll show you guys that. I'll show you guys how I finished it off. And um, we're going to get started. So as I talk about, this is my mini skirt block that I have drafted. This is in my link in bio um, under shop. You can print this out for free. So go ahead and get this resource. Um, print it out so you guys can follow along. Hello, Tender Poison. How are you? Good evening. Where are you uh, watching from? It is um, 12 noon Eastern, 11 Central, where I'm at right now. So if you guys don't have this yet, print this out. This is in my link in bio under shop. This is free. It is a mini skirt block so you guys can follow along how to do this. Hi guys, central time, yeah. So I'm just gonna cut around the outside of this um, while you guys all tell me where you're from, where you're watching from today. I'm just cutting out the little skirt block so you guys can see this. And if you guys don't have a skirt block for yourself or for a model or for anybody that you um, are interested in making any skirt blocks for, my, just a reminder, my how to draft a skirt block is free right now under um, my link in bio. If you go to learn how to pattern draft, learn pattern drafting, um, the how to draft a skirt course right now is free. So go ahead and check that out because then once you have your skirt block for yourself, hey from South Africa, how is it in South Africa right now? What's the weather like today. It is beautiful and sunny in Texas. We've had some rain recently, but I don't think it's gonna stick for us. Okay, so the first way that I'm gonna show you um, how to get a circle skirt. Circle skirt is going to, yes, I do have a finished product. This is, if you've seen some of the videos that I've been making this week, this is the finished circle skirt, um, circle skirt uh, that I made. So a circle skirt means that the entire hem is one full circle. So your side seams are a whole half of the skirt at one time. So it's a half of a circle all in one go. You guys can see that. So this is a full circle skirt, the um, most popular in the 1950s, the poodle skirt. Um, so that's what I'm making, but obviously it looks a lot different. Now poodle skirt is going to be made out of like a thick wool. This is a chiffon fabric. So this is more special occasion. But once you see how quick this skirt is to make, it's, I mean, it takes longer to cut it out than it does to sew the whole thing together. So this is the skirt. Right? So super nice drape and it's one full, like I said, you know it's a circle skirt because the side seam goes all the way out and it's a half of a circle, front half of a circle back. So you only have the side seams. I have a zipper down the side seam and then the circle skirt is also, um, doesn't have any gathering at the waist. So it's actually straight to the waistband, but then when you wear it, 
you get this really nice, pretty draping effect. So this is what a circle skirt looks like. This is what I'm going to be covering how to make one from measurements. So if you don't have a skirt block, I'm going to show how to cut out the skirt for any measurements without having a skirt block. If you want to learn how to make a skirt block, and when I say skirt block, I'm talking about a pattern that fits a body. So you could make a skirt block for yourself. You could make a skirt block for your kid. You could make a skirt block for um, a client. You could make them for you know people on Etsy. If they send you their measurements, you can actually make this skirt super quick and easy. Um, so I'm gonna start with the flat pattern method, just so you guys can see that. This is gonna be a slash and spread method. So I'm just recapping. I did show this last week, but this week I wanna show um, a little bit more in detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this pattern up into um, six or maybe eight here, I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do is you always wanna have a line from your dart tip to the hem so that you can, what's called, we call transpose the darts. So you have this fullness here, which you need to take out because when you finish sewing the, um, when you finish sewing the skirt to the waistband, you don't have a dart, right? You want it to be straight to the waistband and you want the fullness to be at the bottom. So we call that transposing in design. And what it basically means is you draw a line here from the tip of the dart all the way to the hem, and then you're gonna close up the dart and it's gonna open up at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you guys that. And then I'm also gonna show you guys how to get the um, skirt block to turn into a circle for you. And this is gonna be super quick and easy. So you guys can see this here on the table. And here we go. Okay, don't mind my junk. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your skirt block and I'm just gonna draw from the tip of the dart down to the hem. Okay, so let's see if you guys can see a little bit better. Can you see that better? Okay, so from the tip of the dart down to the hem, okay? And then I'm going to, let's say this is two inches, so I'm gonna divide this section here into a couple more. Now, as long as they're pretty even sections, it doesn't matter how many you decide to make. So I'm gonna do the same for here, over on this side. Now again, this is a mini block. This block is available for you guys to practice. This fits my mini mannequin and I'll show you guys um, once I cut that out. This block fits my mini mannequin, but it's perfect for practicing the concepts of design. So if you guys want to print out the mini block to practice on with me, that is in my link in bio under shop. That is free, it's a free PDF. You just print it out and you can follow along. So you're gonna cut from the bottom all the way up to the top and leave like a little section that's still attached. And again, this is the flat pattern method, but I'm also gonna show you guys how to do it without the block. I just wanna show you guys how to formally do it and then I'm gonna show you guys my cheat, cheat version of how to do this. So you're gonna cut all the way from the bottom. Now at the dart pot bottom, I'm gonna leave a little, little bit so that I can close up that dart and it's gonna to go towards the hem. Again, that's called transposing the dart. That is um, a term we use in fashion design when you close up a dart and you move the fullness of the dart to somewhere else. It's just a really fancy way of saying like move the dart to another location because you need it to go somewhere. So I have my sections cut, <clears throat> excuse me, and I am going to close up the dart first, oh, close up the dart first and tape that together. So when I'm doing the pattern, I really wanna start there because then I'm gonna look at the rest of it all in one shot. So I'm gonna close up the dart because I know for sure that I don't want a dart in the waistband or any gathers at all. So I'm gonna open this up and this is basically how you do it. So a full circle skirt 
means that the fold of the skirt is straight, straight grain from the center waist down the front. And then your side seam is going to be at a 90 degree. So you're gonna have a 90 degree angle up here and you're gonna have your center front down the front and you're gonna have your side seam at the salvage edge. So if you were to open up your fabric, open up your fabric flat, you're gonna have your side seams both along the selvage edge and then your center front is down the center. So the way that you get a circle skirt when you're drafting is to get one quarter of the skirt. So you want this to fit in a 90 degree square angle. And then you're just going to space these out so that the openings at the bottom are just about even. And then you would put it onto another piece of paper and you would tape it down. And then this outline is your actual circle skirt pattern. So this is how I would flat pattern it, okay? So if I were to, um, if I had a skirt block for my mannequin or I had a skirt block for my, um, my client, then it would be super easy to cut it out this way and call it a day, right? But let's imagine that you are making a dress and you don't have a skirt block or you don't have time, you don't have time to have a skirt block made. Um, again, if you guys are interested, if you wanna learn how to draft a skirt block, I have a course, it's free right now, free course on how to draft your own skirt block from measurements. That is in my link in bio under learn pattern design. And um, that is, available for free right now, how to draft your own skirt pattern on my website. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, if you don't have a skirt block and you are interested in making a skirt for someone, making a skirt for yourself, um, or like I said, again, you could do this for people on Etsy, they just send you your measurements and you can make the skirt. The only skirt measurements that you're actually gonna have to have, get my mannequin here and we'll talk about it. So you need your waist measurement, the full circle of the waist, and then you also need the length of the skirt that you're gonna do. So um, from the um, waist down to the hem is how you wanna measure this. So this here, This is my mini mannequin. This is um, what the skirt block fits if you do print that out. So you need the full waist measurement, right? And then you also need your waist to hem measurement. So if I were to make an eight inch long skirt on this here, this would be, you know, mid thigh on the mannequin. So um, when it's a mini mannequin like this, you would basically double the measurements to get a size six or eight um, in general. So the mini mannequin helps us learn design concepts, but also um, helps us practice the design without having to cut out all this fabric. And you know, if you screw up, it's only a small piece of fabric that you cut out. So um, the, let's see, this is gonna be long enough. Okay, this piece isn't gonna be long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out a, skirt using just the measurements on the mannequin and nothing else. So when you fold your fabric in half, um, it's gonna be the straight grain. Let's see if I can find, I cleaned up my fabric here. Okay, so I have my muslin fabric, right? This is good practice fabric. And this is your full width of your fabric and you're gonna fold it in half, okay, just like you would. So this is the selvage edge at the top. Now, um, I like to do it with the selvage edge at the top because then when you're, when you're cutting out and you have your side seams, you don't usually have to finish them because the selvage edge is kind of like um, fray proof. So you have your selvage edge here this is gonna be your side seams at the top, okay? So I'm gonna lay this down. I'm 
I'll show you guys how to cut that out using just the measurements, just the measurements here. All right, so we have, this is your selvage edge across the top. These are gonna be your side seams. And this down here, this is your fold. So this is your center front. So the mannequin measures 13, 13 and a quarter. So real quickly here, we'll do, we want 13 and a quarter, but we want to add seam allowance. So we're going to do 13, what, seven, five divided by four. It gives me three, about three and a half. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one quarter of your waist measurement in the top corner and you're gonna basically situate it so that both of the legs or the both sides of the pieces of pie are even. So doing three and a half, I'm gonna mark it. So three and a half fits. Now the three and a half is the curve of the tape measure, if you can see that. Three and a half is the curve of the tape measure. So I'm gonna mark both of those sides and then I'm gonna give myself a little spot in the middle here. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw in that circle waistband. All right. Now, I wanted my length of my skirt to be eight inches. So all I'm gonna do is mark down the center front eight inches. And then I'm gonna go around the hem of the skirt and mark eight inches all the way around. I think it takes longer to mark this and cut it out than it does to do any other part of the skirt. So I am just marking eight inches all the way around. And again, you know it's a circle skirt because when you cut out the entire front, you have a whole semicircle, which is one half of a circle. So I'm going to cut along the hem. Now keep in mind when you are making one of these skirts, you need to have seam allowance here at the waistband because the line that I marked is the actual waist. And you need to have the um, a little bit of hem allowance at the bottom so that you can turn it up and hem it. So other than that, it's, I mean, it's done. Our pattern is done, I'm cutting it out. I mean, it obviously takes a little bit more time when you're doing this full scale. If you wanna watch that video, I have that posted already on how I did this full scale for the yellow skirt that I just showed you guys. But I'm already cutting it out, right? So this is how you do a circle skirt. And there is half semicircle, half of the skirt. So I'll show you guys on the mannequin. Here she is. And at the side seams. Now this skirt is, um, this fabric is muslin fabric, so it's gonna stand up a little bit more. Like I said, this skirt was the most popular, you guys are gonna know, um, poodle skirts in the 1950s. So this is um, where that skirt, this is how you would make one of those skirts if you were making it for, let's say, um, Halloween or something. So this is the full circle skirt. So again, we know it's a circle skirt because one half of the skirt is a full semi-circle, right? That's a full circle. If you wanted less fullness, all you would have to do, you know, is decrease how much, how far you went up which is a lot easier to do if you're doing it from a block because you just decrease the amount of um, space in between the openings. So this is the flat pattern. This is how you look at it. This is the center front. And then all we did was rotate these pieces up so that you got all of the fullness, right? But if you wanted more of an A-line skirt and you didn't want so much fullness, you can really decrease this down to here, you know, like that, and you wouldn't have all of the extra fullness on the top. So that would be more of an A-line skirt. 
Do I have tips for adding volume to the skirt? So adding volume to the skirt, you could do this, but for a bigger waist measurement, um, and then gather it down, and then it would be more like um, period, um, you know, old, you know, uh, excuse me, like costume style skirts. So you would gather this down and you would still have the extra. You could do um, panels of circles like this here and it would be like one panel here and that's a circle, one panel here and that's a circle. And then you would have like all this extra fullness here at the bottom. Um, but the best way to add like a lot of fullness would be to gather the skirt down. Um, so this is super, super easy. And if you want to practice, I already mentioned this for, I'm sorry for anybody who's been watching this entire time. I've already mentioned this, but if you want to practice, I have the mini skirt block that is now in shambles. I'm so sorry. The mini skirt block. This is in my link in bio under shop. It is free for you to print out so that you can practice. You can follow along with my videos and you can practice it. There are, um, learn how to pattern draft. That skirt is free, or um, this learn how to draft a skirt is free right now on my website. So if you wanna learn how to draft a skirt, you can do that in your own time and you can do it for free. So check that out. Everything's in my link in bio, but if you want to, um, when I do these mini mannequin classes um, to show you the skirt drafting and bodice drafting is coming, I already have that. Um, I've already got it drafted out and ready to go. So I'm gonna be doing a bodice drafting class probably in a week or two after I'm done with my special occasion skirts. Um, this, this right here, this mini mannequin skirt block is free. So um, go to my link in bio under shop and print this out so that you can practice. This is the slash and spread method. So you just divide it into sections and then you slash it and you spread it for as much fullness as you want, okay? So question would be, would gathering make it heavy? Yes, the more fabric you add, the heavier it gets. Do they have a pattern for this? So I am showing you how to make your own pattern today. This is my mini mannequin block pattern for practice. That's available for free in my shop. And would this fit an American Girl? Yes, this, this is about the same size as an American Girl doll. Um, but if you wanted to make it a little bit smaller, you wanted to change it up, you could um, you know, base it on the measurements like I showed. So I went through the entire way on how to base it on measurements. So all you have to do is measure the waistband of the doll and how long you want the skirt, and then you could just cut it out. So that is super quick and easy. And if you are um, joining us late, the full playback on this class and every class that I do is available on my website under, um, if you go to my link in bio, it's under Sewing Saturdays. The very bottom of that page, I have my full playbacks for class. So if you miss anything, don't worry. So again, this mini mannequin block, this is a skirt block for my mini mannequin. This is printable for free in my shop. This is good for practice because you get to practice on how to slash and spread without having to print out a ton of paper. Um, but if you wanna learn how to draft a block for yourself or for anybody, for any measurements at all, it works with, doesn't matter what the measurements are. If you wanna learn how to draft your own block, that class is also free on my page. Practice for your granddaughter. This is an awesome pract um, practicing project for, uh, especially if you're gonna do dolls. I like to do, show it on the mini mannequin because um, obviously it's less fabric to cut out. It makes it easy, you know, to put together. So um, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Best material to use for a flowy skirt. I cut the special occasion. This is chiffon, chiffon fabric is what this is cut out of. I'll turn you guys a little bit this way here so you can see. This is, if you guys check out the videos that I did um, this week, I was working on this skirt. I'm gonna be working on special occasion dresses um, all week because I have dresses to make for my sister-in-law's wedding. So this skirt here, this is a full circle, full circle skirt, and it is made out of chiffon. 
So this circle skirt is, um, this is, I think they called this a Georgette chiffon. Um, it's a little bit nicer than the polyester chiffon that I ordered for my sister-in-law's wedding stuff. I can show you guys that fabric too. So this, I know I'm, I'm obsessed with this color right now. <laughs> I almost thought it was a little crazy when I picked up the bowl of fabric, but you know, it, it's just, it's, it's hitting me in all the right ways right now, you know? Okay, so this is chiffon fabric. If you want it to look more drapey, more special occasion, this is chiffon. If you want it to stand out a little bit more, this is cotton, okay? This is cotton, this is how cotton is going to lay. It's going to have a little bit more volume. Let's, where's the back of this skirt? It's right here. So it has a little bit more volume to it. This is the one I cut out last week. So the side seams, when they're sewn together here, right, that's how much fullness you're gonna get out of a cotton skirt. If you want it to stand out even more, you can do um, stiffening at the hem so it stands out more. And then obviously the most full, just like a poodle skirt, if you're going like costume design or whatever, poodle skirts were made out of wool, uh, traditionally, and like wool suiting, and they stood out, you know, all the way out here because they usually had a petticoat underneath of it. So if you're trying to get the volume to stick out to the front, to the back, to the side, whatever, you know, this is how cotton is going to lay in the full circle. Right? And then the chiffon is going to be super thin. Would you put a liner under the chiffon because it seems, yes. So question is, the chiffon seems see-through. <laughs> this skirt, I would put a liner under any chiffon unless you want it to be see-through. The point of wanting it to be see-through, you know, it might be a bathing suit cover-up, you might like the see-through look. This here, I'm gonna do a nude, a nude um, skirt underneath or a nude undergarment, like just a little, just a little one here. And then that way I can change it up depending on how much um, I don't wanna show or I do wanna show. So I haven't made that yet, but the nude, I'm gonna do a nude undergarment under here. But the dresses that I'm gonna make for the wedding, the, <clears throat> what I'm working on for the wedding this month, next month, um, this is a lilac and then the underskirt is also lilac and this is the chiffon layer. So you can really see straight through the chiffon layer, right? But this is just the top draping layer. So the skirt, the underskirt lining is gonna be this color and then this is gonna be your top, your top layer chiffon. So yes, I would absolutely put something underneath of the chiffon, especially if your chiffon is light colored. If your chiffon is light colored, I mean, you can see, you can see straight through this, right? So I would not recommend doing a chiffon skirt with no underlining. You can do um, nude, you can do skin tone. Um, you can match your client's skin tone if you have a skirt that you're making that um, you kind of like that see-through look. There's, um, this is my example for that. If you like the nude look of it, this has a nude short skirt underneath of it because the whole point basically is to make it look like it's almost, you know, it's see-through or whatever. So this is another good example of the undergarment under the skirt. And this is, this is just the style that it is because this is tan here. So if you were doing something like this, I would match um, client's skin tone, your skin tone, if you're doing the nude look underneath because you wouldn't want, you know, a light tan if you have darker skin. Um, it would show through wrong. So this is, this is the dress that I'm going to be making for myself this month. And I'm making, I don't know where the other one went. This is, I'm going to do two flower girls in the two tone. And then I have one more. I don't know where my paper went. I have one more that's um, junior bridesmaid. That's, I'm going to make, so I have five dresses to make this month. So I'm going to be doing a lot of special occasion dress training this month because I'm going to be working my butt off. Um, this is it right here. Yes. And then I have two of this to make. 
So these are gathered. These are gathered skirts here. This is what I'm making the lilac. Um, it's a gathered, lightly gathered skirt for a junior bridesmaid. And then I'm doing two flower girls. Um, back to the question on adding fullness. This is gonna have like a skirt crinoline underneath of it. And this is really, really gathered. Whereas this is not so gathered. So um, the question, I have a question on here about tips for beginners. I have a lot of things for beginners um, on my website. And I have a lot of videos for beginners. I usually try to make my videos beginner friendly, no matter how hard the um, task is. So I want to um, make sure that you guys are getting those. I'm sorry, I'm like, my allergies are crazy. I'm itchy today. Um, that you guys are getting your, um, the simple way to do things so that it's very attainable for beginners. So I'm gonna be showing um, videos of this skirt probably this week. Um, I'm gonna be posting ways to gather different things, ways to gather chiffon versus ways to gather netting or crinoline and make the actual underskirt for something like this. So this is what I am going to be focusing on um, this coming week. And um, next weekend, uh, next weekend's class, every single week I have a Sewing Saturdays class. So if there's anything that you ever want to learn, be sure to go to my link in bio under Sewing Saturdays and sign up for the newsletter. I have a newsletter that goes out one time a week that shares with you um, all of the new articles and anything that's free um, and what we're going to be doing for class. So non-spammy, um, sometimes I include a pattern with it, sometimes um, it'll just say like, Hey, this is what I'm doing this week. If you guys want to join, you can get ready for class with me, you know, print out the pattern. Here's the pattern. Um, so if you, and if you're interested, if you sign up for that newsletter, there's a spot that says, you know, what do you want to learn? So you can sign up for that. Um, if you go to my link in bio, that's where you can find my website. Um, under sewing Saturdays, all of this information is there. And I do have YouTube under Jacqueline Terry Designs, Jacqueline Terry Design Studio. It's usually, it's linked to my Instagram. Uh, it's definitely on my website. So if you just go to my link in bio, all that stuff is there. And then um, the playbacks for class. If you joined us late or you wanna watch the other classes that I've done, um, the playbacks for classes are on the Sewing Saturdays page at the very bottom. They're like the full one to two hours. <laughs> you know, you can skip through it. Um, so you don't have to watch the entire class every time. But um, last week and this week, I co covered the circle skirt because I think it's really cool. And I think it's a really cool way that you could make money. Um, you could make doll skirts. You can make kid skirts. You can make special occasion skirts. Um, just from measurements. You know, if, I, if you sent me your measurements today, your waist measurement and how long you want the skirt, I could make you a circle skirt and send it back to you. Um, without any other information at all. So I think that that's really, really cool. And I think that it's um, a big opportunity for anybody who is really interested in that. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, today I covered the, the slash and spread method, flat pattern design, slash and spread. Now this looks crazy and sounds crazy, but if you go to my link in bio under shop and you print out the mini mannequin skirt block, okay, mini mannequin skirt block, you print one of these out, spread it open, and you will have a skirt. That's it, that's the end of it. And then um, I showed you guys how to do the skirt without using a skirt block, if you don't have a skirt block. Um, just a reminder, the biggest part of this circle skirt here, you gotta close up the dart, right? Cut to the bottom of the dart, cut down one leg of the dart and close up the dart first. And then you can slash and spread as much fullness as you want that skirt to be. And keep in mind that this is one quarter of a skirt. So I'm going to be also posting, I have right now how to draft a skirt course for free. That is on my website, how to draft a skirt. And um, I'm going to be posting supplemental courses that are how to manipulate your skirt block. So once you've made the skirt block, so in design class, 
right? We learned in design school because I have a degree in fashion design, have a degree in fashion merchandising separately, and I also have a master's in business. So the fashion design school that I went through, um, we did skirts class. So skirts class covered how to draft the skirt block, how to make the skirt block, how to make a straight pencil skirt. And then from there, you learn how to manipulate that block into any skirt that you want. So from this skirt block, I can show you how to make this skirt. I can show you how to make this skirt. I can show you how to make this skirt. And it all comes from one block. So that's the stuff that I'm gonna be um, adding to the website for skirts. And then um, if you keep an eye out on my Sewing Saturdays page, my um, I'm gonna be posting on my TikTok events and my Facebook events. Um, when the like how to draft a bodice class is gonna be coming up, I've been um, getting ready for that as well. So all of these things are gonna be on my website. Just sign up for the Sewing Saturdays newsletter. You'll just get one email a week and it'll tell you, you know, what's new on the website and when you can go check it out. So make sure that you do that. Um, and then right in the description for the newsletter, let me know, you know, what you're interested in learning so that I can kind of add some of that stuff in there um, that you guys want to see. So the last thing that I showed today was how to get this skirt cut out from just measurements. So we measured this mannequin and I plotted it out on fabric. Now your salvage edge, if you don't know what a salvage edge is, it is literally just the edge of the fabric, you know, the one that's got the dots on it from the weaving loom, okay? That's just the edge of the fabric from, that's the factory edge of the fabric. That is what it's called, it's called a salvage edge. When you're cutting out a circle skirt, I like to put both of my side seams on the salvage edge so that when I'm sewing them together, they're not raveling on me because most of the time I'm making the circle skirts out of this chiffon fabric because it looks pretty. Um, <clears throat> so your salvage edge, both of the side seams are on the salvage edge of the fabric and that's how I know that this is a true circle skirt, okay? True circle skirt because both of the side seams are on the same line. Collars and shoulders, those are good. Okay, I can add those in. Can you show us how to take measurements correctly? Okay, so mini mannequin, any body, any mannequin at all. So for this skirt here, your natural waist. Now obviously I have this marked out here, natural waist is going to be, if you actually, so the way that they taught us in design school is to take a piece of elastic, put it around the waist of your person, pin it, and then have them bend side to side. And that naturally rolls up into that crease and that's where your natural waist is. So to get your natural waist, so you can, if you're on a person, you know, wrap it around here. You don't want it super, super tight because then it's not really gonna be accurate. So, you would go all the way around and then right where your um, metal, the metal clip part is, right where that lines up. So you don't want it, like I said, you don't want it super tight. You are gonna add a little bit of ease when you are making a skirt. Ease is the little bit of wiggle room that you can stick your fingers in, you know, in between you and the skirt. So this here, so I would say this is 13 and a quarter on this mini mannequin for the waist. I like to keep the top part of the measuring tape with the lines closest to the edge. I like to keep those facing up so that when I bring it around to the metal part, so I would say that the full hip is 18. So on my mannequin here, this is 13 and a quarter and an 18 inch hip. And then if you're going to measure from the natural waist, so if you're measuring on a person, that elastic trip, trick is amazing because if you leave it on, then you just have them hold the tape measure at the waist line, and then you could go all the way to the floor. You could go 
how long do you want it, fingertip length, things like that. And then you can measure, you know, say it's down to here, it's 11 inches. Um, and then that's the length of your skirt. So then when you go to make your skirt, you add a seam allowance here. Anytime you're gonna sew a seam, you have to add seam allowance if you're making the pattern. So you would add your seam allowance here to make sure that you have room to sew it. And then you would add a hem allowance at the bottom. Hem allowance, um, if you're not familiar, is how much you turn the skirt up at the bottom to, to um, finish it. And um, the hem allowance usually goes, the more hem allowance, the thicker the fabric. So if you're using a heavy wool, you want one to two inches to turn up. And if you're using a thin chiffon, I only add a half of an inch to the bottom of the skirt because I don't want to have to cut stuff off. So when I turn it up quarter of an inch and then I turn it up again quarter of an inch, I've already accounted for my half of an inch and then the skirt lies right at the floor and it's usually perfect. Um, if you are interested in how to take measurements for a skirt, that is included in my How to Draft a Skirt course. Um, that is the first full course that I did. Uh, so please forgive me if the videos are boring. Um, I'll probably be re-recording re re them soon. That's why it's free. So, um, but all the information is there and it's accurate. So if you go to um, my link in bio under Learn Pattern Drafting, um, that How to Draft a Skirt course is totally free and it includes how to take the measurements to draft the skirt. So if that's something you're interested in, um, please, 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 please check it out because it's not gonna be free forever when I re-record it. It probably won't be free anymore. So check that out now. Um, and then the how to measure for to draft a bodice, there's a lot more measurements involved, but I will be posting those um, on videos, on social media, and I will be posting those on my website. So make sure that you sign up for that newsletter um, because I'm always sending out a copy of what what I posted for the week in the email um, What happens if you put a short seam allowance on a heavy fabric? So if you were to put a short seam allowance on a heavy fabric, you would just account for that You know, um, just turn it up whatever you decided you were going to turn up um, Sometimes people will say the more expensive the garment the more seam allowance it has <laughs> It's just like a weird I don't know, that's kind of how we learned in design school. But if you had a heavy wool fabric and you only wanted to turn it up half of an inch, um, you could definitely turn it up half of an inch and finish it off and it wouldn't matter. Um, but you would just make sure that your measurement that you wanted to measure, say the skirt, you want the skirt to be finished at eight, eight inches, that's the most important part. Just finish it at eight inches. If you screw up or you cut less or you don't have enough fabric um, because all that stuff happens, um, just finish it on the outside edge, finish it at eight inches. Um, you could also add in, um, let me show you guys what I also did here. You can also add in a binding if you wanted a finished edge, but you don't want to finish up the fabric. So jean, this is jeans fabric that I cut out and I did a thick, a thick binding at the bottom to finish it because I didn't want to turn up the thick jean fabric and have a bulky hem. So instead of doing a bulky hem on jeans, I did, um, I made my own bias binding out of one of my husband's old dress shirts. Um, that video is up to, I think it's pretty cool. Um, so I made binding and you could do a hem binding on the inside. So you could do like an alternative fabric. You could do a bright color. You could do a print on the inside of a plain skirt. Um, that's another way to finish if you didn't want to turn up a really heavy bulky fabric two inches because that would add crazy amount you could add a thinner you know pop of a fabric or um, something special or you know you could do this by recycling old clothing and get free fabric that way so if you have any other questions on that this is this is my little jean vest I made to go with a neon skirt and my little pocket Everybody see my pocket? <laughs> I'm so proud of this. <laughs> this is my little welt pocket. I wasn't sure about it. Um, so I made like lips pattern pocket. It's a little bit different, but I was trying something out. So um, this is going to be, this um, videos on how I made this too are going to be on all of my social media probably this week. 
um, as well as all of the special occasion stuff I'm going to be sewing because I'm making content with my life and just teaching you guys along the way. Um, if you have any questions on anything that I talked about today, please let me know or send me an email. Um, you can, thanks, I love it. <laughs> I love the pocket. I'm going to be using the pocket as a, um, I just signed on to be a blog contributor for the Janome brand. Um, so that's probably going to be on their blog at some point, um, the lips pocket. So I'm going to share that on my social media with you guys and I'll probably share it um, in my newsletter as well when that is live so you guys can see how to do that. Um, my sister has asked me to make an eyeball pocket, so I'm going to be troubleshooting that at some point. <laughs> um, but today uh, I wanted to get on here and definitely recap the circle skirt. So let me give you the rundown again. If you are interested in practicing pattern design, doll clothes, American doll, this is kind of like an American doll size, so you could also get on and do that if you were interested. This pattern, I know it looks crazy right now to somebody who didn't watch this through, but this is the mini, mini mannequin block, skirt block. Anything can be a pocket. I know. I'm so excited. So I'm also going to have a course on pockets too um, once I get there. I've just been slowly filming everything. Um, everybody went back to school and my little girls are going back to school. Next week, my big girls went back to school two weeks ago. So when everybody's back in school, I'm going to be filming heavily for uh, my website for all this stuff. So this here is the skirt block for the mini mannequin. You can print this out for free to practice for class every week. And this is free. So go to my link in bio under shop and you can print out the mini mannequin block so you can practice. If you are interested in learning how to make the block, which I think that everybody should learn, you want to learn how to make the block from measurements. So I can make the mini mannequin, I could make my pattern, I could make your pattern, I could make your kids' pattern, um, you could make a men's skirt, a women's skirt, whatever you want to do. The skirt is the building block that you have to learn first. If you want to make pants, it comes starts with the skirt block and then you add the crotch extension. So the skirt block is really where you need to start. So if you're interested, hop on board, sign up for my Sewing Saturdays um, website, uh, go to my link in bio under Sewing Saturdays, sign up for the newsletter. So all of that stuff, all this information you get all the time from my Sewing Saturdays page. So um, I have a question on here. Where did I buy my mannequin? This is D-E-L-I-A-N-G, D-Lang, on Etsy. And you could tell them that I recommended you. I'm not going to get anything special, but I love this. It's amazing. This is one of the best mannequins that I've had, and I like that it has a crotch because um, I also want to show lingerie design, sportswear design, pants, how to make the pants fit the crotch. So a lot of the tutorials that I wanted to do for you guys you know, I didn't, if I just had just the regular skirt form, you can't do any of those, any of those videos. And I like that it's got a cute little booty so that I could make pants that fit the booty. Um, so this is the DeLang um, half scale mannequin, mini mannequin. It's actually almost like 50% of what I paid for it. I bought mine in 2020 and I think it was $117 and the last time I looked at this skirt um, when I did a video to promote it because I love it so much, um, this mannequin was like $50, which is crazy to me because I think it's really good quality and I really like the stand because um, it's kind of, it's heavy, heavy duty metal. So um, that's where I got this from if you guys want to follow along, but if you have a mini mannequin or you have a mannequin or you have... For yourself you can do all of these videos for yourself for any measurements at all using the techniques that I'm showing you so but if you're interested in the mini mannequin blocks you can also just print those out and cut them and sew them together and give them away as doll clothes or you could just practice with them so that you don't have to cut out the full measurements and you can kind of get like 
an idea of how to put them together. So today we covered the circle skirt. Sign up for my newsletter because it's super non-spammy and it only has what I put on my website this week, what you can learn and where to get it from. And right now my how to draft a skirt course is free. So check that out on my website. <sighs> what am I forgetting? Oh, um, I'm making a whole bunch of dresses this month for my sister-in-law's wedding. So follow me if you want to see me lose my mind. So I'll be making these. I'm showing you guys along the way how to do different types of special occasion, um, how to put them together, all the little tips and tricks that I use. And because I've been sewing for 20 years or so, I sew every day. Um, I also do pattern design for brands but I can't show any of that because those are their patterns and not mine. So this is the circle skirt. If you've been following my videos this uh, last week or so, this is the circle skirt that I made for myself. She has an invisible zipper with a hook and eye. I did French seams. French seams are where you sew it inside out and then you trim the seam down and flip it inside out and sew it again, which gives you a finished seam on the inside with no fraying and no serging and a finished seam on the outside. This is how I finish chiffon fabrics and a lot of special occasion fabrics because, um, you know, in case you see inside the skirt for whatever reason, it gets kicked up or it's a high low skirt or whatever. This is finished on both sides and that's how I like to finish them. So if you wanna know anything about the French skirt, or the French seam, sorry, French skirt. The French seam, that's also posted, um, but the French seam is under um, Learn to Sew on my website, which I'm gonna be adding a whole bunch of videos um, to my Learn to Sew courses. That's free also on my website if you wanna check those out. It's just basically like a collection of videos that has, you know, the straight seam, the zigzag seam, all that stuff. I'm gonna have be adding videos every single day. Like I said, my kids are back in school right now, so. I'm going to be crazy filming. Um, love the mannequin to practice. Yes. <laughs> Especially do swimsuits. That's cool. I want to do a little bit more. Um, I just did for a brand. I did a bodysuit, um, a couple bodysuits for a brand. So I'm probably going to be doing some videos on swimwear. I know we're kind of almost out of season for it, but swimwear, dancewear, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, leotards, underwear, lingerie. I'd like to do all that stuff. Um, I did get a question. I'm really sorry I didn't see this. Somebody asked me how corduroy would do with this fabric. Um, I think it would do, or with the circle skirt, I think that corduroy would probably lay similar to like the poodle skirt because it's very stiff. Um, you would have the flouncy look at the bottom for the circle skirt. It's not gonna lay the same as the chiffon where it just kind of hangs down, which is my personal favorite, um, but you would have a lot more fullness. So I would just Google corduroy circle skirt and you're gonna have a really good example of exactly how it's gonna lay. But if you wanted to cut one out, this is how you would do it. Does anybody have any other questions for me before I get off of here? Whew. I'm like sweating in my house right now. Anybody else have any questions for me? Um, sign up for the newsletter. Check out my How to Draft a Skirt course. Check out my website. Um, if there's anything that you don't see, that you want to see, let me know. And I'll be happy to make a video of it. I'm always making videos on social media um, for comments that I get. If you have a question, I like to make follow-up videos. Um, you guys are the reason that I'm even doing this. So what you want to learn is what I show. And also I'm going to be doing... Like I said, a lot of special occasion this month, um, a lot of tips and a lot of extras for special occasion dresses and um, bodices are also coming too. So if you have any questions, um, then I am always live on Saturdays. I'd like to also add back Wednesdays, but I am always live on Saturdays at 12 noon Eastern. So I'm central time, it's 11 for me, but 12 noon Eastern and I'm always going to have Every week I post in um, Facebook and I post on my website, the event, and I post on TikTok, the event. 
So if you're interested, just sign up for it. Um, sign up for the event at any point during the week and it'll give you a reminder of what time the event goes live in your time zone. So, but every Saturday, 12 noon Eastern is when I am live. And on my website, I'm gonna have, every single week I have a event card, what we're gonna be doing if you need any um, additional information or any patterns or any extras. Um, it's all located there. So JacquelineTerry.com slash Sewing Saturdays is the page on my website that all this information is always on. And um, check it out. So let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next week. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it.